This is a minimalist blog and we are going to make one and borrow one in this tutorial, in this full length tutorial from beginning to the end, helping you to set it up very easily, change the content, make styling changes, add content and make it look the way you want it to look. Hi, this is JP here with Websites for Beginners, our full complete length tutorial on making your minimalist blog. I've got the minimalist block, which we will be starting with here. It's a starter site. And as you can see, the idea behind minimalism is that you don't have all kinds of bells and whistles and that things are very to the core. So you have a home page up here, you have an about us page, then you have the news, which is the blog page, and then you have a contact page. If you go to the about page, you will even see this is very minimal. You have probably the author over here with a little bit about the author and it remains minimal, decluttered, very clean. On the news page, we actually have what we call the blog archive page. And we'll talk a little bit about this page because newcomers to WordPress struggle with this one because actually this page is empty. Yeah, it's, it's really, there's actually no content physically on this page. It's just an archive and understanding what is an archive will help you a lot in your way forward within WordPress, not only for blogging, but also when you start working with something we call custom post types. And that's something for the future. On your news page, you're going to have these single posts. So currently, if I click here on 2020 trends in home decor, it's going to take me to what we refer to as a single post. This is the article. And the purpose of any blog is that people will come and read these articles. So you have these articles, they are combined and displayed on this page, which is the post archive page. And these two work hand in hand. And we like to use this word dynamic. It's very dynamic. So what that means is that if today I sit and I write a new article, once I publish that article, it will also appear on this page. And that's what we mean by it is dynamic. This page is created from other pages. It's a little bit abstract, but as we go through it, you'll get your head around that. And finally, a very simplistic contact me section over here, as easy as that. And we are going to bring in this page and then we are going to make changes and we will go ahead and bring in our own content as well. This is what we are working towards too. And remember, we are not trying to make a thing that stands out from the crowd. We are trying to be noticed by being very minimal, right? That's why it's a minimalistic block. Enough of that. That's what we're going to be working on. Let's get into WordPress. And this is my vanilla site installation. How you get to this point is a lot to do with how you are working with a host or if you are working on a local server. And we're not going to cover those in this tutorial. That's something totally different. But to get to this login screen that you will have to figure out by yourself, are you going to use a host and pay for that? Or are you going to practice for free on a local host? I'm using Microsoft Edge, the new Edge that runs on Chromium for this tutorial, but this will work on any other browser. I just, jump around between browsers, no preference. But because I'm using a local host, by default, it opened this browser. And since the switch to Chromium in February, I'm very happy to work with Microsoft Edge. Here we are with in our WordPress site. Let's have a look at a vanilla installation. There's a few things in a vanilla installation. The first thing is that you get a default post. There's a default post. You get and default pages. And we don't like that. We want to clear those things out. So you go to post and then under this one, you can see quick link trash and I trash it. Then I go over here to the trash can and I empty the trash, similar to what you do in the house. Trash doesn't just disappear. You first throw it into a bin and then that bin has to go out when the garbage collectors come. Same for the pages, these two default pages to select them all click here then go to the bulk actions, move to trash, apply, and bing, bada, boom. They're not gone, they're only in the trash. So we click again on trash and then empty trash. What else do I want to do here? I am going to make a few, two small changes. One is I'm going to change the language of WordPress. To do that, I go to settings and general. 
Currently, by default, it is set to United States English, American English over here, sight language. I'm just going to put it on South African, be a little bit patriotic, you know. Not that there's a huge difference. We do use a few different words here and there. For example, trash will now become bin, so small things like that. And the other one I will change is the time zone, set it to my time zone, which is UTC plus two for South Africa. And you'll set it to yours, GMT. UTC is the same thing. Save changes. Let's go see what this site currently looks like in its vanilla installation. Click up here to see the front end. And this is how it looks. And we get this design from the theme. And the theme that comes by default is the 2020 theme. Go to the back end, click up here. And then we go to appearance, themes, and click on that. And we see the four themes that come installed by default, which no one knows why that is done. Because, oh, why? I only count three, not four. Usually there's four. Now there's three. You never know what you're going to get with these guys. They are full of surprises. We're not going to use this. We're going to use a theme called Neve for this tutorial. Neve is a very nice theme, works very well with page builders, very quick, and it has starter sites. For this minimalist blog tutorial, we are only working with the WordPress Gutenberg editor. The Gutenberg editor is not the real name, it's WordPress editor. That is the native editor to WordPress. And it's a great editor if you are working with blogging sites. I think if you are looking at the most cost effective solution for working with WordPress, you can't go wrong if you're just focusing on a blog. The only thing you're going to pay for is hosting and a domain name. But then for the rest, everything I'm going to show you in this video is done for free. Everything, even my time. <laughs> right. We're not going to work with these themes. We bring in our own theme and we click here on Add New. Takes us into the famous WordPress repository. And I love to use this word repository lately because it took me quite a while to pronounce it very well. So now I want to overuse it. Go here to search themes and you type in N-E-V-E -E for Neve and it will go through the repository looking for Neve and here you go. Click on install, you go through the process like we usually do, install, activate. And we, before we activate it, let's have a look again at how this site currently looks on the front. And to do that, I'll go up here where the name is of the site. I'll click and hold with the cursor and drag it up here to the tab bar and drop it. And this is how it currently looks on the 2020 theme. I'm going to repeat a lot of things that I repeat in other videos as well, just to make sure that you get the basic concepts. And if you want to know more about WordPress in particular, go and check the video that we had released just a while ago, primer for WordPress total beginners. Some of those things I'll cover here again. Most of it, I'll just quickly skip through it. So if you miss out along the way, go check out that video. This is how it currently looks with the 2020 theme activated, but I'm going to activate the Neve theme and that will change the whole display, the whole layout and the look of how it currently looks. And just to bring that home to you, this is what the theme is all about how it controls the header, how it controls the fonts, the colors, and the page layout, as well as the footer at the bottom. Go to the back, and now we click Activate Neve. And before we do anything else to Neve, we're just going to have a look at how the front end will display now. So we do the same, go up here, because this is now activated with Neve. Click and drag it next to this one, and you see completely different. Little footer down here, and a little, little header up there, Sidebar here, very, very empty compared to this one. Actually, there I want to tell you, when it looks like this, it's already a good sign that these guys are giving you the basic bare bones, no loaded stuff that comes with it, and this theme should be able to do the job. Neve is a good theme. I highly recommend Neve, one of the themes I like to use. So now you know the big change that has happened from 2020 theme to the Neve theme. Close out the tabs and let's see what Neve has got to offer for us. We are going to work with this splash screen, but before we do that, I want to get rid of these three themes. I like to declutter my workspace. I don't want to be distracted. It's just a little, little, you know, thing that I have to clean out things, similar to what I did to the posts and the pages earlier. To get rid of these themes, you simply click on them, 
In the bottom right hand corner, there's an option for delete and then you just confirm with OK. And we do the same for these. And then for 2020, goodbye. What we are left with is one theme and WordPress will not allow you to delete the last theme. There's always a last theme, like there's a Mohican, there will be a theme. And from here, you can go into a few settings for Neve, but we're gonna go up here where it says, congratulations, Neve is now installed and ready to use. We've assembled some links to get you started. And look, your site's library. This is what we're going to do. And many people often feel like, hey, you shouldn't use other people's designs and sites. It's like cheating. You should create your own thing. Ah, that's bull twang, man. The whole world works on copy. Copy and improve or copy and adjust. adjust. And that's how you learned how to do art. When I first went to art in high school, we had to draw a line. And guess what? There were people before me who drew lines. So I didn't invent the line in art class. It's the same with website design. No one is really original. We all take ideas from somewhere. We combine them. So if you are a new beginner, you're going to use a starter site. So let's stop talking about starter sites and find out what a starter site is all about with Neve. Click here, try one of our ready to use starter sites. What Neve is going to do now, it's going to go into the WordPress repository, strictly speaking. It's going to download an app that it's going to install in your plugins folder. And once it's gone through this process, we will have a look again at that, which is the Neve starter sites. Loading the starter sites. And here we see now these ready to use pre-built websites with one click installation. Over here, you have a selection of various page builders. Remember I talked about Gutenberg? That is the native WordPress editor. We're going to work only with WordPress. So select Gutenberg and you have a selection of starter sites over here. To view it, let's take one here. The wedding one, click on that. It's going to give us a preview and load the entire site. And you can browse it like you would do with a normal site. So go to our story and the people keep changing, right? It's not the same people keep marrying here. Location, accommodation. And this gives you an idea of everything that this site contains, the kind of information, the kind of styling, how it is laid out. And this is where you start. That's why it's called a starter site. So for example, if you were designing a website for a wedding or an engagement for Jane and Josh, then you can come here and have a look at this and say, well, this is actually pretty good. I'm going to use this layout. I'm going to change the images definitely because Jane and Josh will not be the same. Your Jane and Josh will be different than my Jane and Josh. We're going to change that. We're going to change the reception place and maybe even change the colors. But we like the layout. Why reinvent the wheel? Seriously, don't, don't overthink these things, you know, Th this, this, not many people are going to know it. Developers like me and others who work with this will probably come onto a site and say, hey, wait a minute, I'm pretty sure this guy used the Neve starter theme. But everyone going to that wedding won't know. So really, don't let this get into your head. Be comfortable with the starter site, select it and work on it. But we're not going to do that. We're going to work with a minimalist block. So here at the top, this is the one that we had seen earlier. We're going to work with this one. And if you see the preview, it's exactly the same as the one I had shown you earlier. I'm going to exit here. I can click import from here, but I'm going to close out from here. And then from here, I'll just click import. It's going to give me a few things here. And the toggle on or off, it tells me, do I want to import the content, like the images? Yeah, sure, I want to have that because the images give me a good idea of what goes where. Do I want to import the customizer settings? And the customizer is how the header looks, how the footer looks, what kind of font, the size of the font. Yep, I want to use that. Begin with the starter site. Widgets, those are the little things we put in the sidebar and the things we put at the bottom. Yep, I want that. And then there's two plugins, Orbit Fox by Theme Isle, and then Gutenberg Blocks and Template Library by Otter. So what these guys at Neve have done is they have designed this site with these two plugins. Disabling this feature may break a few of your things on that site. So my recommendation is keep it on and you import everything. You can always remove the stuff that you don't want to use later. Got that? Let's click on import. And depending on your internet connection, this may fly you know, through a few seconds and it's done. 
Sometimes it may take a few minutes. So always when you get to this part, go get yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, relax, and then come back after a few minutes. And it's done. It gives you the option here to add your own content. Now nah, we're going to do that later. So we click here on View Website. And now this is how your WordPress site currently looks. So what have we got here? We've got the home page, about page, everything I showed you at the beginning. Copy, blueprint, exactly the same, carbon copies. The only thing that's going to be different is that your URL up here will be different to mine, to everyone else. But the rest, it's going to be the same images, the same text. And that means, of course, you have to go and change it. But before we do that, let's go to the back end and see exactly what Neve had done here. So the first thing is, if we look under Appearance Themes, you and I know that we've installed Neve, and that's good and fine. Now, if we go to Plugins, though, we'll see that there are a number of plugins. We never installed them. They were all done by Neve. These are the two that they had asked us, the Gutenberg Blocks and Template Library by Otter. Now, Gutenberg Blocks and Template Library... Gutenberg Blocks and Template Library by Otter add-on is something to the WordPress editor, the Gutenberg editor. And you're going to see when we go in there, there will be these extra features that we can add to our library. And that had been used in the creation of this site. And also here, Orbit Fox Companion. So you will see Orbit Fox over here. And then Gutenberg Blocks, let's see where they appear anywhere. Appearance. Ah, so I guess they are settings. Ah, here, Otter. So if I go to settings, Otter, let's say skip, you will see there's all of that over here. So the Gutenberg blocks here under settings, Otter and Orbit Fox over here. What else do we have here? I'm going to open the front, front end so we can have a look. We've got a header and this had been important with a menu. So if you go to appearance and menus, you will see that the Neath theme had brought in for us this already, the menu. It assigned it to the primary menu. And that's why it appears over here. It had created pages and it had created four pages. Here is the home page it had created. There's the about page, the news page, and the contact me page. So four pages, one, two, three, four. If I click on the news page, you will see we have these blogs here. And I count six of them. There may be more, but let's see how many. And we're going to find this under posts. So those articles, those posts here, they are one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Imported those, and they are all starter templates, pages that we can use to work off. Earlier, I had told you that this news page that we go to here, which is a blog archive page, is actually empty. Let's go have a look at this page currently as it has been imported pages. And I click here on news and it takes me into the editor. And you're going to laugh at me because you're going to say, wait a minute, JP, let's just close this. This thing isn't empty. I see a lot of stuff going on over here. Yeah, no, let me show you. Let's delete all of this. So I'm going to delete, remove block. What is remove this block, another one, remove block. Where do we have more blocks? Remove them all, remove block. Okay, you agree with me? This page is empty, so I'm going to click here on update. Let's go back into WordPress. And now, go to the front. If I refresh this page, click on news, it's still there. What is going on here? Now, this is what we call an archive page. This news page is empty, but it populates itself with posts. So that's why we come back to that term dynamic. We tell WordPress that this page, the news page, is our posts page, our archive page. So every time when we add a new article, it will be added to this page. We'll get to that again. I, I will keep telling you this because through this tutorial, I hope that especially for beginners, you get to understand what is a post archive or a posts page and the difference between a single post. So where should we go now? Before we get into changing stuff, I want to go to the contact me page and just show you that we are missing a contact form over here. There's a little code here. We refer to this as a short code. There is supposed to be a contact form here, but it ain't. 
we will put in our own contact form, a free contact form. I promised you everything from the WordPress to the end is going to be free. Only the hosting and your URL domain, that is something you will have to set up by yourself. So we've got this page and it's nothing like the page we want it to be or the site we want it to be. Let's go to the home page. We need to make a few changes here. We're going to change content. We're going to change the text, maybe, and even the colors. Those are the kind of things that we want to change. To edit this page, this home page we are currently on, you can do so from two locations. The first one is to go into the back end to pages, and you simply click here on home, and that will take you into the WordPress editor, aka Gutenberg, and this is the new format since WordPress 5.4. So if I fall and stumble around you trying to find my way, please forgive me. I don't know what I do. This is the first place you can find it is from the pages, all pages, and then just click here on home and you can start editing it. The other one that's very simple is that if you are on the page, you go up here to the WordPress toolbar and there is an option here for edit page. So let's go into that. A few things that we see here, and that is that we've got content here, sections or blocks. And in these sections, we have content. Like here, we have two columns. And then we have content here and the image over here. Then we have another section here with four, uh, three columns, one, two, three columns. Then we have a section here that gives us, what would this be, like almost like a call to action. No, this is more like a heading, a section heading. And then we have another section here with four columns. In this tutorial, I'm not going to show you how to change these things in detail. For that, we've got many other videos on our channel here at Websites for Beginners. But to build out within the WordPress editor, we refer to these sections as blocks and also the content as blocks. And you bring those blocks in up here by clicking on this little plus. You see it says add a block. And then you have a selection of things that you can bring in. Collapse this and you will see we have quite a number of that we can choose from. Down here you see the word otter. Now remember when we had installed Neve, it told us it's going to install this. So what it had done is it installed this add-on which brings in additional blocks for us to work with in WordPress Editor. And there are many such plugins on the market. You can check out, we cover many of them here at WordPress for Beginners. They extend the functionality that you get within the WordPress editor. The WordPress editor comes in with quite a few nifty ones, but they are lacking in so many regards. So if they don't 100% fulfill the purpose we want to use them for, we go look for these add-ons. And like this one from Otter, they are free. So you will see that a lot of the stuff that had been built out on this page had been done with Otter add-ons because it's just a little bit easier to use. While we are here on this page, let's open a version of this on the front end so we can go back and forth, back and forth and see what we are doing. So over here, I'm going to click on preview and that will open one for us on the front end. You do notice that the front end and the back end very different to each other and we refer to this as a back-end editor. When we don't have that exact copy and real-time editing, we refer to it as back-end editing. Many page builders are front-end editors, but for our tutorial here, we're sticking purely to WordPress and show you what can be done within WordPress. The idea with working with a starter site then is that we are going to go ahead and change images, change the text, and change the color scheme. This is things that you have to do to personalize the site. So let's begin with images. Here, if I click here in this area, it will select it. And up here, you will see what you have selected. I have selected a section. And that's the entire area like so. To change the background, you go here to style and you will see it had applied this image. So I can change or remove this image. If I click on it, it takes it out. And then I click here on Media Library or Upload. I'm just going to click on Media Library because the two more or less do exactly the same. Over here on Media Library, you can see the images that had been imported by the Neve theme. But we're not going to use these. We're going to use our own. I have a few that I have prepared. So I'm going to open my Explorer, your Finder on a Mac, my images over here. 
and which one am I going to use here? Let me search search this one over here. Click and drag that one and and it's going to bring in this lady reading a book. And that's how it's going to look now. If I update it and we then view it on the front end, you will see it update in real time. So all those changes, even though in the back it looks like this, remember, back front, back front, that's how it works with WordPress. We have a little bit dark area there. So what we can do is apply an overlay. Let's see if we can do that. If I go here to background overlay in the option settings over here, perfect. So we're going to choose an overlay color. This should be white. It says white, so guess what? It's white. And it already applies the overlay at an opacity of 50%. And I think that actually doesn't look bad. Let's update our work and then it will automatically update the preview. So, oh, remember, we want to keep it minimalistic. We want to keep it clean and uncluttered. So this is a very, very nice way. Down here, we're going to keep this blog posts. It's a great title. Services, not so sure. Services, it's a very personal blog site. So let's type in here, my family, my family. No, no, let's make it even our family. Ooh, la la. And then about me. So we have this text over here. And then we have these three links here. So for this blog post, this view post will take us to the posts. Our family Get in touch will take us to the contact us page. And then the about me will take me to the about me page. So you get what we are doing here. Three sections or three columns. And then we have some text here. This is a paragraph. This is a heading. And over here, if I click on it, you will see it says advanced heading. And then there's a link to it. So you can see it says it's a link to the demo. No, no, no. We don't want to do that. We want to bring in our own link. Let me show you quickly here in the front. If I click here on view posts, it takes me out of WordPress and it takes me to the demo site of Themeisle. So just be careful. You need to set up this link here. And how are we going to do that? Let's go back. Let me click outside here, do it again. Click here and select that view posts. And then here you will see they've entered a link already. We're going to click on edit. I'm going to triple click in there to select everything and then backspace to delete it. I want this to go to our news page and that page is called news. So when you are working within the same site, the same pages, you only have to type in a forward slash and then the name of that page, which is news. And guess what? It even searched for it and it found it. So you can select it and there you've set it up. See, that was pretty nifty, right? Let's go to this one, click on it, select everything to make sure. And let's do the same thing, edit, going to triple click to select it, forward slash, and then contact. Let's see if it finds anything for us. Let's add that. Let's hope that works. Okay. And then about me should be an about me page, about page. So same thing, forward slash and about. It didn't find anything. So let's see caps lock. Let me just do it again. Uh, ooh la la, edit, let's select edit instead, triple click. There we go, that's the mistake I made. About, I say it selects, but I guess it's just because I'm typing it, press enter to add this link. And over here, I'm just going to type, uh, delete that forward. Let's see what's going to happen here. Click on update, we go to the front and it's updating there. If I click now on blog post, it takes me it seems we can't find what you're looking for. Perhaps searching can help. Let's see. Here is my news page. Click on that. And what do you see up here? This is the name of this page. 582C1-news-blogger. So it's not the name I expected of it. So let me show you what we have to do here. Go to the back end. Go to your pages. And here you will see your about page is called about. That thing is called a permalink and a slug. I'm going to confuse you a little bit here. And there are many ways you can display it. So I'm going to just click here and hold my control command on a keyboard view so that you can see it says about here, but over here, it doesn't say about. It has this long title over here. How can we change this part so it only displays about? It's a very simple setting. Look what I'm going to do. Go to settings, permalinks. Click on permalinks, and over here, 
make sure you select post name and click on save changes. If you have done that and you refresh this page and you go to about and it still does that, you do the following. Now you go into the about page. So I'm going to close this, click on edit page for about. And here in the sidebar where the options are permalink, you click here and you will see URL slug. And you're going to type there about. Okay. It's good you learn these things because they do happen now when I say update. And I go to preview this page, click again on about, you will see it says minimalist block about. Let's do it again so you can cement this. Let's go to the news page. Click on news page and you see again it has this slug here at the end. This is called the slug. We want it to say just news. To change it, go to edit page. And I don't see my permalink here. Again, don't worry. Just hang in there. If you don't see something on your page, which should be there, go up here to screen options. And over here, slug, permalink, same thing. Click on slug, triple click there, and type in news. Okay, and this is being taken from the theme. Let's go to the front end. Preview changes. Going to close here. Let's go to our news section. And now you see it says news. Okay, are you hanging on? Let's do the same for contact me. Click on contact me. Again, you see it has this strange slug. We don't want that. We want it to say contact, only that. Click on edit page. And this time you will see the permalink over here, URL slug, highlight everything, type in contact. Update, preview on the front end. Let's see now, contact me, refresh. Good, it says contact. News, says news. About, says about, and how about home? Home should be home. Okay, okay, do you remember why we did all of this? Let me close it, let me close it, let me close it. We go back here because we had changed the names for these links. Let me just update this page, click on preview, and now things should work fine. Blog post, if I click on view post, watch, it takes me to the news. Go to home, if I click here, get in touch, it takes me to contact me page. Back to home, and if I click here on the about me page, it takes me to the about page. Just to refresh your memory what we had done. When you link anything to another page, you can just highlight that, click on the link here, and there's already a link, so you just click on edit. And then here, if it's another page, you simply type forward slash plus the slug. And we gave the news page this news slug, and that's all you have to do, enter it. And we did the same for these guys. We add a contact, and for this one, we added the slug about. And so you can control this jumping from one page to the next page. Remember that, very nifty, and this way you can make sure that people can easily navigate between the different pages. It's a little bit confusing at the beginning, but you'll get used to it. Remember to change the slug, remember to set your permalinks. Let's update our page and see what else we have to change here. Over here, let's tackle this section. Let's say, welcome friend. I simply triple click to select all the text, and I say, my dear friends. This is a very personal blog, right? Very, very personal. Let's change the image here. Let's see if we click on here. Okay, what have we selected? A cover. You will see always the name of this element or block will appear here in the options sidebar. And we have the image here, clear media. Let's take it out. Then we go back to where? Over here. Okay, so we click here on media library. I'm going to bring in my explorer again. And what shall we add here? This image over here. Let's see how this will look. Select, and it brings in nicely this image. What I want to do now is I want to change the color as well. Currently, it's this dark black, but I want to take it a touch down. I'm going to update and preview it on the front end. And then I want to bring in maybe this brown or maybe even this blue. I, I think let's try and see what we can do with the soft blue down there. For that, I'm going to grab my color picker. This is a color pick eyedropper, which is an extension for Chrome. Because I'm using Microsoft Edge, which runs on Chromium, you can also install it for this browser as well. 
to get any color on this page, you click here on the eyedropper, and as you hover over it, it will give you the color that you're hovering over. So here, what is that? It's almost like a lilac. Let's click on that, and when you click on it, it gives you this display box. And we want to grab this code here, so make sure the code is selected. That is the name of this color. Control-C to copy it, Command-C. Go to the back end, and then here on this area, the section, click on the section. You see it's highlighted a section, and because we're working with color, color is style, so over here it will be under style. And we click here on custom color because we're going to type in, we're going to paste in that code. So triple click here, control command V, and look at that. Ooh la la. Now your text is a little bit too light. There's not enough contrast. And for things to look good, you have to ensure contrast. If you think it's too light, like in this case, you go ahead, you click on it, and you change the color. You see, I simply go over here to color settings and I make the text darker. Color settings, text color, same for this one. And that's how you work between the content here and the option sidebar on the right. Let's go make some more changes. Here we've got three more. So if I click here, let's change this image, clear image, and then we media library. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I know there's one here somewhere with a cat, but now, ah, this one. Let's see how that will display. Okay, the cat is there. And if it doesn't fit in the way you want it to fit in, remember there's a selector over here. You see a little circle. And as you draw that, you can place the focus of what you want in here. So if I want the cat, and I like the cat actually a little bit to the side, make sure you put it like that. Same for these guys. Click on that, clear it, bring in, and you bring in your images one by one or you can bring them in a batch as well. Let me just see here, drag that a little bit. No, no, I think that's good. Next one, click on it, same thing, clear media. Media library, and yeah, let's choose this one. A little similar, but it's okay. So this is again a very, like I said, personalized block. Just drag the selector to the right a little bit. She's writing about her family, her lifestyle, especially during lockdown. You can understand why she would run to write all about that. Down here, she's writing about people, urban life, and abstract. So you're going to choose here what is this person or you yourself, or what is she writing about. Uh, we're going to maybe say pregnancy because she just had a baby. We're going to talk about isolation because they're all locked up. And then she's going to talk about Felix, Felix the cat. These are her three main topics and categories that she writes about. Maybe she and Felix have long conversations every morning. So, you know, maybe some kind of monologue with the cat. Don't want to get all kind of weird here. But you have to understand that's kind of what a journal is a blog is all about. And then you go through this. You can change your text over here. You're going to also come here to these images. And again, you're going to bring in your own images. And I'm quickly going to go through that so that we can have a few more images. Let me not use the same ones again. And you're going to keep it as arty as possible because this is a minimalistic block. So you don't want to, let me just drag, you don't want to bring in too colorful stuff. Here you're going to just drag the selector like so. And you build out your own site in no time with this pre-made design. What's his name? Jeff. Jeff is working very hard from home with a massive nice cell phone account he's going to get at the end. He just doesn't know it yet, or probably he knows it. And this one, media library. Last image, do I still have one? Let's repeat one. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the repeat. Okay, good. There we go. So let's see how this all translates on the front end. I'm going to click on update. And if your preview tab is still open, it will automatically update there as well. So we've changed the text. You will change text over here. We've changed the links. Look at this, my dear friends, something about her. There's another link here. So we have to go change that link. And these images that she had brought in for her different posts. Very nice. Look how quickly we've changed this. You're going to change text there. Look at that from that very monochromatic site that we had previously to where we are now. Just a few changes, bring in your images, bring in your text, and voila, you've got a very nice site. 
But let's do one step more. Let's go and change the fonts. The font is regulated by the theme. And when we want to make changes to the theme, we work with the customizer. Again, you can access the customizer in many various places. In this case, we're going to access it directly from the site on the page we are on. So you go up here to the WordPress toolbar and you see up here, it says customize. Clicking on that will take you to the customizer of the Neve theme. And all customizers kind of look the same, but trust me, none of them are the same. One of my big recommendations to newcomers is don't mess around with themes. Get one theme and learn it well, because if you're going to try one theme and the next theme and the next theme, you're not going to find that they are the same and you won't be able to find the same thing. They use different terminology, different categorization. So it's very confusing. So with Neve, let's see what we want to change. The first thing we want to change is the text. We want to make it a little bit more old school, a little bit more typing, writing style. And for that, we want to use a serif font. A serif font, so that is all about typography. Every time we talk about fonts, you will find it under typography. If you don't know what typography means, think of typewriter, typography, and then you will get to the idea that we are working with how the words look. General is the first one we tackle. And this is the body font or the base font, the font that is the same all over your site. Over here, you see font family, click on that and you see there's a big list over here. This is connected to Google fonts and Google fonts are free. So if you know what you're looking for, you just type it in there and you can use it. Don't pay anything for it. I'm going to use a very common font that people like to use called Playfair Display. You see, I type in Playfair and already it gives me two options here, Playfair Display with a SC. I'm gonna go for this one. What I want you to take note of is the font on the right, the moment I select Playfair Display, how my body text is going to change. You see here, it has changed, but not my heading text. So the heading text is still the same. We're going to do that as well. And by doing that, changing it to this font, we make the fonts a little bit softer. At this moment, it's a very hard, minimalistic, in-your-face, abstract font almost. We want to just give it a slightly softer feeling. So that was the body font. Let's click back and then headings. Same thing, font family, click here, and then we do the same. We say Playfair, ooh, Playfair, and select Playfair display, and look at that. CCC. And to capture that, you have to click your unpublish. So do not forget that now we've changed our content, we've changed our fonts look, we've changed the images, and you just need to make sure to go and change those links. Let's do that so that you can get used to it. I'll close this one and you'll see what I do every time I make a change and I come to the new preview, I close my old pages and you work from here. To edit this page, go up here to the toolbar and click again on edit page. Remember, we have the link over here, my dear friends, and it says your go to block. Currently, that is not set yet. To set that link, click here, make sure you select everything or just click here on edit and then select everything that Neve had typed in there, delete it, and to go to a specific page, forward slash, and the name of our block page is news, right? So remember that, click here to log that in. So now we've set that link as well. Let's go test it, update, then we click on preview, go to block, and lo and behold, it's the news page, which is our blog page. What else do we have here? So we have these links and you can change that. Or if you don't want to, you can just simply delete them. But we'll have a look at them. These social links are sharing links. So if I click on that, you're going to see it says sharing icons. You're not going to add any links here. The purpose of these links are or these buttons are that when people click on them, let's go back to home page, it will give them the option to share this. I'll have to sign in for that, like Twitter. Yeah, so you'll have to sign in for that. This is for your user to interact with. And you can probably add a few more here. That one over there, Tumblr. What is this one over here? And uh, something. You have a few options over here and you can also disable them. 
Very limited. I don't see, for example, Instagram here. I'm not sure if, let's see, styles here. Yeah, so this one doesn't include Instagram. And that's our page. So you've got your homepage set up in a Jiffy. Just make sure you've got your images before the time and the content that you want to set there. Choose a nice font, change the colors, and that blog that we had started with to where we are now, you can almost not recognize it. And that's our homepage. Job well done. Same thing now for the other pages. So let's jump over to the About page first because we're going to look at these three static pages, home, about, and contact me. And after that, we'll get into the real deal, which is the posts. About page. So again, we have to change a few things here. Let's close this one. And then about, we say edit page. Now the thing is, yeah, let's say about, about edit page. And let's begin making changes here. We want to keep it minimalistic, which means we're just going to make a few changes. Change the color here, and we want to use the same color that we used previously. And I don't remember what that color code was. I'll click here on preview to take me to the front end, and I'll click here on home. Then over here, grab my color picker again, grab that color, control C, command C, just close that one. And then I'll come back here to style and custom color and paste it. There we go. I just want to close this one out and then we change the images, click on it, and we do the same that we did previously. But this time I'm going to repeat these images. So I'm just going to click on them, clear media, media library, and because these images are already there, I don't need to bring them in again. Just change the selector a little bit again. Clear. And she wants to give Jeff also a little bit of attention. He's already feeling shut out. So she put some images of him while he's still in the picture, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Good. Let's see over here. This is going to be her. And we haven't given her a name. Jenny. Her name is Jenny. So we click here. And this is an image element. So you can see up here it says image. So image, image, replace. So the setting is up here, replace. Open media library. And we're going to find Jenny. And I don't think I've brought in an image for Jenny. Or did I? Let me find here. This is the one that I wanted to use for her. And we select that. Good. So Jenny is in the, in, in, in the show here. And she loves simplicity. Great for her. Let's go and change the color of this background as well. Click on it. Style, custom color. And you see, the more you do it, the quicker things go. What did I tell you about contrast? Can you read that? Mm, not really. So you click on it and you change the color of the content to something that gives you more contrast so that you can see it better. Goldilocks would approve. Then my story. So what do we have here? We have another image. So we're going to replace that, open media library, and see if we can bring that in. Hmm, not the best of the best that we want to have over here. Styles, click on styles, click on rounded, and I'm going to drag it in like this. And I wish I could make it more rounded. And for that, I will have to go and make a few changes in WordPress. But let's say we leave it like this for now. And then let's have a look at the rest of what we've got here. We've got I Love Simplicity, a little bit more about herself over here. And then over here, blog posts and what else? Mm, we can say contemplations, contemplations. She's very deep. Think a lot about that. Let's update this and go see how it looks on the front end preview. Okay. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. I wonder if there's an overlay to this. Let's just go and check these columns. And media settings, dimensions, and then we have an overlay. Let's clear the overlay. There we go. I said clear overlay, but it seems I still have to drag down the background opacity. That's fine. I'm thinking this looks just a little bit more friendlier. Background opacity. Update. And to the front. Ah, this suits Jenny much better. I love simplicity. And that's it. She doesn't want to reveal too much about herself so that you stalkers out there will not contact her that often. 
She just wants to have a basic idea of her family, write to her family and friends. Perhaps, maybe this isn't even a very public blog. It's a very personal blog just for close friends. And this is how we change the About Us page. Now I click here on Contact Me. That takes us into the Contact Me page. Like I told you before, now I'll go and close this one out and I'll work from here. Here, we are not going to do much. The only difference that we want to make to this page is to bring in a contact form here where people can send Jenny a message. In this case, though, there's a little problem here, and that is the plugin used for this contact form. Neve didn't bring that in. But don't fret. We're going to fix this in a very, very simple way. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete whatever is here, go to the edit page, and this is called a short code. If I scroll down and you see here it says short code, click on it and then select the three dots and remove the block. Let's update this and close this annoying autosave message over here. Now we need to bring in a plugin that can give us a contact form and a free one for that matter. So let's click here on the W to take us into the back end plugins and we're going to bring in a super duper contact creator form called happy forms because we want to be happy. Type it in this one word. Happy Forms. I love this plugin. Very good. There's a Pro version too. So if you're interested in upgrading to the Pro, you can check out Happy Forms. But we're going to work with this one, the hands reaching out across the land. And we click on Install Now and then Activate. Great. Activate. And then we go and look for Happy Forms. Over here, you see Happy Forms. They ask you some stuff. We're not going to care about that. You can just click here on continue and it takes you this all forms and they give you a sample form. We're going to create our own form and it's as easy as pie. Let me show you how to do that. Add new and then over here we're going to call it Jenny's contact form so that we can easily identify it. Jenny's contact form and then we start here by adding parts to this form. So Jenny wants to know your email, she wants to know your name, and she wants to know your message. That's all. So the first thing is your email. So click here, add a part, and look for email, email. Ah, there's a part. Email, click on that. Collapse that. Then the next one, add a part. We want to have your name. A name is just one or two words, so it's a short text. Click on add a part. Ah, short text over here. Let's collapse that. We just bring it in. And the last one is she wants to get your message. And the message could be a paragraph or longer. That will be long text, right? Add a part, long text over here. Great. So we've done that. And we have that email, short text, and long text. Let's quickly change a few things here. We're going to say for the email, it's email. So you can type in what you want over here. Do you require this? Absolutely. So you close that one out. Short text. This is going to be the name. You want them to provide the name. Do you want them to give the name? If you deactivate it, it will say optional, but we want it. Otherwise, again, we're back to the stalking thing. And then the long text uh, dropped me a line. And that sounds more like something you need to save. Send me a message, reach out to me. And we also want this. And there you go. This is now your form as created. And one thing I want you to pay attention to is that if you look at the font, you will see it's actually that Playfair display that we had used in the customizer. So Happy Forms looks at the theme and say, hey, you use Playfair display. I'm going to apply it here. Absolutely stunning. So now we've set up the form. We go to setup over here and the setup will determine what kind of message will appear when people send this form to you. For example, it will say, thank you, your submission has been sent. Now for Jenny, this is way too clinical. We're going to say, thank you, my dearest supporter. I'll get back to you shortly. Make it a little bit more intimate. And over here, if there's a mistake, oops, try again, something went wrong. And then for the submit button here is um, email me now. Ah, let's leave it at send. And the rest, we can uh, leave that. This is our setup. Email is where this message will go to. So Jenny will have to put in her email here, jenny.furi uh, at hotmail.com. Use something that I guess won't be 
visible anymore and you can leave the rest. We're not going to worry too much about that. And then you have options here over style. So you can change a few things here. You can change how, how it will display. The only thing I'm going to do is go to title and I'm going to say display the title on my form. No, I'm going to hide that and then save. After you've gone through your form, you exit here by closing out. And then you will see Jenny's contact form appears over here. And we're going to add that to our Contact Us page. Go to Pages, All Pages, Contact Me, and click on Edit. Scroll down to this area. This is where we want to add that extra part. So what you do when you want to add it under this, click on this one, and now you go up here to Add Block. And the great thing about Happy Forms is that they, when you install the Happy Forms, they actually give you a block. So if you type in your Happy Forms, you're going to see there's a widget and it says Happy Forms. Click on that and it will bring in Happy Forms and it will say, which form would you like to add here? From the drop down, Jenny's contact form. And there it displays. Let's update it. And then we preview it on the front end. As you can see, everything is beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful, I just say wonderful. And now when people come to your site, they add their email, they add their name, send me a message, and this will go to the email address that you had provided within the setup. If you want to make any changes to it later, you simply go back to the form and you make a few changes and it will update here. So you don't have to worry. This is an excellent free form. And if you want to know more about this form, check out. We've got a tutorial here on WordPress for beginners on happy forms and more to come on how you can also use the pro and premium features within happy forms. So essentially, we've done a lot now. We've changed our homepage. We've changed the about page and we've changed our contact me page. We've created those links. Images had been changed, color, and we've also changed the font in our theme customizer. And we've done a lot. I'd shown you permalinks and I had shown you slugs, which could have been a little bit confusing. But at the end of the day, we got there. Now let's start looking at the main meat of a blogging site, and that is the blog area. And there are two things that you have to remember. Single posts, which are the articles you write and then the blog archive page, the posts page. And that is the page that will display an index of your articles. If I click here on news, this is that index page. It displays the six articles that we currently have here. Now, what you have to understand about themes is that they determine how this page will look. So you see, currently we have an image here, then the title, and then a little excerpt from your theme, uh, from your post. And we have it two columns spaced like this. Within your theme, they will give you some control over how you can change this. Free themes have very li limited control, but your pro themes will give you far more flexibility. We're using only free stuff in this tutorial. So let's see what we can do with this page. Every time we talk about the theme, remember we have to go to the customizer. So up here in the toolbar, go up there, click on customize, and we go and look for the layout of the block. This is sometimes a hit and miss when you go into themes to look for the stuff, especially if you are new to a theme. So if I do go a little bit bananas here and there, please excuse me, because with these tutorials, I jump from one theme to the next one but I'm pretty sure we're going to find it under layout. So let's see if I'm right. Click on layout and we see here blog slash archive and we see single post. So this page displaying all the posts, an index, remember that is your blog and your archive. So if we want to change anything here, we have to select this one, blog archive. And whoa, a lot, right? So what do we have here? This is the one that's currently selected. So let me just scroll a little bit down and then see what happens if I select this one. It's going to update the page and it's giving us a total different layout. So this is how you can change it within the theme. Let's choose this one, which is called an index. Great, I like this as well. This is perfect, right? I, I really like this one. Let's use this stagger one because it's just a little bit different. 
But if we go back to the original one, which is a grid, grid, then you will see here you even have control over how many columns. You can put it on three columns, and then it will display like this. I really like it. Then over here, enable masonry. Masonry is going to stagger it a little bit. It's like bricks that you stagger around the place. Very nice. But I'm going to go back to this one, and we're going to stick with this one. I like it. I just think it's a little bit mm, balanced, my opinion. Now let's see what control do you have over here. Excerpt length, and this is the little bit of text that is displayed so that when a person comes to your page and they are interested in this, they will read this part and say, oh, okay, interesting. Let me go read some more. And you have control over how many characters. I think this is characters. So if I reduce it to 30, you have less. 20, you have less. And I wonder if I put it at zero, will it take it away? Nope, it's not going to do anything. Let me drag it. Minimum is five. So you do need that excerpt length there. If you want to give more, you just type in a bigger number. So 45 gives your reader a little bit more to see what this article is all about. You have post pagination, and that will appear here at the bottom if you have many, many, many posts and you have a second page or a third page. We don't care about that. We don't have that many. Thumbnail shadow. So if we want to bring in a shadow for our thumbnail and the thumbnail is the image of the post, let's drag it here. Let's see what happens. One, do you see anything? Two, Sure, I think I see something. Let's try five. Ah, oh, five is a little bit more visible. Ah, that looks very nice as well. Reset over here, we put it back at zero. Why? Because it's a minimalist block. We want to keep it very simple. Your meta, metadata, that is the data that appear here. You can currently see there is a date and then comments, but because there are no comments yet for these, they don't appear. You can also activate the author. And currently the author is me, which is admin. And if there's a category, you can activate it and the category will also display there. This is personal taste. I usually just go with author and date. I turn off comments and I even turn off the category unless I've got a very, very big block with many categories, then I will do that. Author avatar. And that is if you want to show the picture of your admin. So if I click that, there will be a little image over there. Now, where am I going to bring that image in? And I want to stop here so that you can see how to bring in an image for an avatar. There's a few ways that you can do it. To save the changes, let's click on publish. And then we exit here. Takes us to the front again. So this is how the page currently looks. But I'm going to go into the admin area. Let's close this one. We don't get confused. And to find your avatar or where your avatar should go, you have to go to users. And if it's only you, like me, in this entire WordPress site, you click on your profile. And this is where I am. Over here is profile picture. You can change your profile picture on Gravatar. Now, what's going on here? Now, WordPress has another service called Gravatar. And you have to go log in there, open an account, and put your picture up there. And then WordPress will bring that image in here. It's a lot of work, right? So let's make it simple. We're going to bring in a plugin that's going to allow us to bring in our avatar. Yes, that's also a possibility. So let's go find that plugin. Go to plugins and click on add new. And this one is called, hold on, user profile picture. Yep, user profile picture. We look for that plugin. Over here, user profile picture, install now. Activate. And let's see what we can do now. So users, your profile. And now you see this has changed from Gravatar to profile image. Click to edit. And if you have a good profile pic, you're going to add it here. I'm going to do something for fun. So we bring in Frankie the Clown from across the street and set him as profile image. And then we just scroll down to the button, bottom, and say up what update profile. If we go to the front now, we go to news, where is our blog, you will see a tiny, tiny little profile image there of Frankie the Clown. Great. So we have set up now our archive page, our blog archive page, our posts page. 
This is our index page. If I click on this one, 2020 Trends in Home Decor, it takes me to the single post. It takes me to that article. I've also got control here over how this one should look. And again, we're going to do that in the customizer. Go up here to the toolbar, click on Customize. And similar, like before, we're going to go to Layout. This time, single post. Over here, click on that. And what have we got here? We've got a few features, not much. We can change a few things around. For example, let's say you want the image at the top. Then you grab this thumbnail and you drag it up. Okay, and it will update. Now the image is at the top. And if you want to change a few other things, or well, what else? Comments. Uh, comments, I want to deactivate that. I'm not interested. Tags, I'm going to deactivate it. Post navigation. So currently, I have this one post, but you know that there's another post maybe before or after this. If I click on post navigation, you will see now here at the bottom, I can see the previous post. I can navigate to that one. I like post navigation, so I'm going to activate that one. Click on Publish so we can lock that in and click back. And then the only other thing that you can take notice of is the content sidebar. This area here on the right is the sidebar. So you can play around with that as well. You have sidebar layout. You can put it on the left. Oh, no. This is for the blog archive. So make sure you go here to single post. Currently, it's on the right. If for some reason you want to put it on the left, many news Journals like to put it on the left. The newspaper, magazines, they like to put it on the left. Blogs often on the right, newspapers and magazines on the left. That's the, the big difference between the two. And then you have a ratio slider here. How much of this page goes to the content of the post? Currently, it's set at 70%. You can increase it. Let's increase it this direction. Then, of course, you squash the sidebar, but you have more here. And you can even decrease it. Then it looks like this. It depends on what you're going for. Reset gives us that 70%, which we think is OK. Let's click back. Click back. This is our main settings. Publish to make sure we locked it in. So wait, what did I do now? I put the sidebar on the left. I didn't want to do that. Let's go back to layout, sidebar. And single post here, put it back on the right and publish. Close out. And now we've set up all the styling for our post page and our single posts. We have to go and change the contents. Let's do that. Go into the back end and click into WordPress area. And we go and write our own post. So click here on Posts so that we see what's going on here. Now, these are the six demo posts that came with the starter site. And naturally, we're not going to use them. They are exactly the same posts. Their content is just different. But the great thing about a starter site is that they give you that foundation, that layout, that template with which you can work. But how am I going to create my post? So for example, if I add a new post, and I'm just going to call it my new post, okay, click here, my new post. And I start building out on this one. Let's say I bring in a heading, type in heading, today's thoughts, put that today's thoughts, and it's on H2 up here. And then under this, I want to bring in a paragraph. So I'm going to grab lorem ipsum text. So I'm going to use my generator, lorem ipsum.io, generate some text here. Scroll down, let's grab text here, copy, go here, and then just paste it, control V. Okay, let's publish that and publish it again. Close here and preview it. This is now the first page that we've actually created. Hey, it doesn't look bad at all, right? It looks very similar to the other posts. In fact, if I click here on the previous post, 2020 Trends in Home Decor, you're going to see very, very similar. Okay, so just click here on my new post. This is the one that we just created. What does this post still need? It needs a featured image. You see this image here? Now, where does this image come from? Go back, and then here in the sidebar, under document, you look for featured image, and you click here. And then you click on set featured image, and you choose one from your library, or you upload a new one. We're just going to choose one. 
set featured image over here, update, and then to the front to go and see how it will look in the preview. And there is my featured image. And this, you now go and build out your, your post. So if I click here and I bring in a new one, let's say we bring in another image over here. Insert media library, let's do this one. And under this, we bring in another heading, a day without rain. Sounds like an Enya song, and it's an H2. And then let's bring in a gallery for this one, a media library again. And we select that one, this one, this one, and this one. And we say create gallery down here. And then click insert gallery. We have three images. And then we add some more text here, which is a paragraph. Let's go grab some more lorem ipsum here. Do, 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 do and copy that back here or here, control V, and we've done enough. So let's say update, and then it will update on the front. Here is our post. Pretty nice. Look how quickly I've done that, right? Magic. No, it's not magic because I just copied stuff. You still have to go and write the post, but that's how quickly we had made this post because we had set up everything from the beginning, and Neve did a wonderful job for us. Now I want to draw your attention to the news page. Look what happens to this page. And we didn't change anything on this page. But if I click on it, that latest post of ours now appears here at the top. Think again of that word dynamic. This page is just a index. Every time I write a new post, it appears here on my archive page. And this way, you bring a new post. And every time you bring in a new one, it pushes the previous one down. Let's go create one more new one. But this time I want to take a shortcut. I'm going to show you how to do that. Go back to the back end, click here on the W for WordPress. And what I want to do is I'm very happy with this new post of mine. And I like the style. I like the layout. And I want to basically use it as a blueprint for each and every other post. But how can I save that? And we're going to do that again with a plugin called duplicate posts. Let me show you how that works. Before I do that, I'm going to do the unthinkable. I'm going to select these posts that we brought in with Neve, click on them, go to bulk actions and move it to the trash can, to the bin. And then over here, I'm going to delete them so I cannot bring them back, right? So if I go to the front and now I click on news, there's only one post. And if I click on that, there is my post. But this is how I'm changing and I'm adapting, bringing in my own minimalist block. Go to the back end, plugins. Let's see what's going on in plugins at this moment. At the very beginning, we had Gutenberg blocks and template library. We had Orbit from what? Orbit, Orbit Fox Companion. And then we installed the happy forms for that form we created, as well as the user profile picture. You see, nicely we're building up our site. This time we bring in another one. So we click on add new. And we're going to look for dupli duplicate posts, pages or posts, something like that. Let me see. I'll, I'll probably find it. Duplicate posts. And how do you know you're on the right one when it says three plus million active installations? This is very popular, especially for posts, because you write one post. You don't want to do that entire template design again. You just want to copy it. So you click here on install now. Activate. And now that it's installed, go over to Posts, click on the post, and you will see now when you hover over it, you're in the quick links. There's a new option, Clone or New Draft. We're going to click here on Clone. And after you've clicked on Clone, observe two important things. One, it's got exactly the same name as this one, but it says Drafts. Now, Drafts, aren't published. And that means you cannot see them. So even though I have two here, if I go to the front and I click on news, I'm still only going to see one. From this area, you can make a few changes by clicking on quick edit. You don't have to go in, just click here on quick edit. Let's change this and we call it Saturday surroundings. And here I am, something very metaphysical. That is now the title of it. You can click here on update. It's still a draft. So if I go to the front and I click on use, 
I still don't see this post. Go to the back, again to quick edit, and over here, status. Select the drop down and click on published. Once you click here on update, this post is now live. It is published. So when I go to the front end now and I refresh it, you're going to see two posts. But guess what? We've only changed the title, the rest exactly the same. So to do a change for that, go into Saturday Surroundings and here I am, and we go and change a few things. The first thing that we are going to change is the featured image here on the right. So we have a new thumbnail to play around with. I'll just click here on Remove and select a new one. Uh, let's change this with, to the cat. And then over here, you're going to change a few things again. Simply replace it. And there's a few things that have shifted around in the latest update. So I'm having a hard time finding them easily. Okay, and this one goes where? Oh, it's a media library. It was a gallery. So we just choose a different one. This one, and this one, and this one. Add to gallery and we remove the ones that we had previously. Update the gallery and the images update. Let's add another block. Let's see what we can add here. Something interesting, maybe our posts. Let me see what posts do we have here. WordPress latest posts. I like that. Let's see, latest posts. Let's add that here. Okay, so now we have those short links to the latest post. We can add it in a grid. Let's see over here, latest post, post content, post content. Okay, you can have the post content. Uh, display post date. Okay, featured image. Right, let's do that. Update. And wow, look how quickly that one updated. And let's see how this will look now on the front end, our new post. Saturday surroundings and here I am looking very nifty. We are very proud of this. We've done a very good job. And if we go now to our archive page, our posts page, you will see the two have updated. And thus, you slowly build out your blog. You can either create every time a new blog. If I go back to the administration panel, you just click here on add new, bring in that article, or you can do what I did. You bring in duplicate post plugin and you click here on clone. and You just use that same format and you make the same page again. It saves you a lot of time and work. And, and, and 3 million plus people, you can see how lazy we are. <laughs> we just love that. Before I wrap up the posts part, I want to quickly talk to you about that whole thing about the empty blog page. Here, if we go to pages again, and we have the news page over here. How does WordPress know that this page here is the one that is the archive page? So let's close these ones. Is this the open one? So why, why it knows when I say news, this is the page that acts as an index page. And there's a setting within WordPress. So I'm going to show you, you can actually create as many pages as you want. So for example, under pages, I'm going to create a new page and call this one, what did I say? My journal. Okay, so add new. I'm going to call this one My Journal. I'll publish it over here, publish it again, and that's all I'm going to do. I'll bring in no content whatsoever. I'll go back here. So now we've got My Journal and News. And my question now to you is, why doesn't WordPress use My Journal and display that as the main page? And the reason is, like I said, you need to set it. And to set it is very important. Here we use a starter site. So Neve did that setting for us. But if you are building it up from scratch, you will have to make that setting by yourself. I keep using the word set. So you should have a clue. It's over here in the sidebar on the left under settings. And this is a strange word called reading. A lot of the words that we use come from long, long ago when people came up with these terms. They're not that logical anymore, but they're fixed in stone within WordPress. I don't think we're ever going to get away from it. So you go to settings and you go to reading. And there are two things here that you're going to observe. Your home page displays. This is where we focus on. My home page is set to home. Well, there's a home page. And my posts page is set to news. So if I now click here and I choose my journal, then this will be my index page for my posts. So I'll say save changes, go to the front end. 
And before I do what I'm going to do, I want you to quickly think. When I click here now on news, what do you expect to see? Do you expect to see this or nothing? And if you said nothing, you are correct. Because that news page, remember, there's nothing there. We removed everything. This is now just an empty page according to WordPress because we have assigned my journal, that page, to be my new blogging page. So how do we fix this here in our menu? Go to the back end, appearance, and go to menus. And then here where you see the news page, we're going to remove that. Click on the drop down and click on remove. Then you go here to pages. Let's click on view all and click on my journal, add it to the menu, and drag it up. So it's again in that position, save it. And if we go to the front end and we refresh, you will now see it has updated here to my journal. So when I click on my journal, it's all back. Great stuff. So it all depends on which page you assign to be your blog posts page. That will be the page that will display all your posts in this index format. We are almost, almost done, but you need to round off your site. You cannot just leave it where it is. The next thing you will have to do is look here at your header. This is where your logo goes. So we need to go and change that. I'll close out this page here. Let me close this one as well. And to change things in your header, that is your theme. So we go to customize. I think my voice is going already. I've been talking too much last few days, recording a lot of stuff. Header, header, header. So we look for header. But look here, as I hover over it, you see those little pencils? So instead of hunting around here for that, I can just hover over here and click on the pencil and it takes me to logo and site identity. Marvelous, absolutely marvelous. So we want to bring in a logo for our site or we can just use that. I'm not going to use a logo, but I'm going to write here in site title, Jenny's Daily Contemplations. And you will see it updates over there. And then the tagline, I will just say my diary. Now the tagline appears up here. Do you see that up there? That is where these things like the site title and my diary appears up there. You can change the size here of that. Let's take make it bigger. Ah, uh, no, it didn't change much. So I'll just reset. The other thing that you also want Jenny to do is to provide a site icon, also known as a favicon. That is that little thumbnail that appears up here in your browser and also on favorites when you're on phones. So select site icon and I'm going to choose this one. It's a very simple little image. And you see once I bring it in, crop image, up there the yellow little one appears. So that's now my site icon. Great stuff, right? So there we've made those changes we can just publish it and now we have a nice title up there our header looks fine i'll close out and let's see how it looks now my new post hey this site is starting to look really really snazzy the one thing though is that if i click here on this what do you see here on the right in the sidebar you see recent posts so these are links to my recent posts comments will also appear here again recent posts and recent comments this is the sidebar. And what you see inside the sidebar are widgets. Those things that we represent there, the search bar and all of this, they are widgets. And you have full control over the widgets that appear in the sidebar. Again, let's go into our customizer. Click on customize and let's see where we have to look for this. You have here widgets and then sidebar. And that's where we want to go. So currently we have all of these so let's just delete a few so i'm going to delete these bottom two for some reason they repeat and i'm going to delete recent comments and as i remove them you see they also remove here on the right i can add new widgets and these are the widgets that you have look over here we've got even happy forms where is it happy forms let's see how that will look so if i bring in happy forms widget and i select jenny's contact form give it a title contact me. I don't see anything happening there. Ah, there it is. You can even put a contact form in the sidebar. How sweet is that? 
It's a little overkill for a minimalistic website and blog, but I'm just showing you what you can do with that. Let's bring in another widget. Let's say you want to bring in an image of yourself, add an image, and this will, no, there you go. And let's reorder this. So I'll move this one up, up, uh, one more up, another one up. So we put Jenny at the top, done. And what else? Do we want to bring in another widget? Let's see what else do we have here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have normal text, you have your pages. And let's say you want to have another gallery of your little family. So we say here, our time. And add images and you create another gallery here. No, not this one. Deselect this one, this one, this one. And these two are the same. Create a new gallery, three images, insert gallery. And let's see how that looks. Three little images here. So just give it that personal touch again. Let's see how this will look then on the front end. Publish it and then close out. And it takes us to the front end. And look how we had changed our sidebar now. If I click here, it gives us images. It takes us to the image, right? So ah, just have to go and change the title of these images so they don't look like that. My journal, my new post. I'm very impressed with what we've done here. And if you keep your eye on the clock, I think we're around one hour and 20, 30, almost there minutes. And we've really achieved a lot. Of course, I, I make it sound like it's very quick and you can do it very quickly. You're going to run into a few things. If you don't do this often and you haven't worked with Neve theme before, it's going to take you longer. Your preparation is going to take you a few hours. Then you have to get your images ready. You have to test your fonts. You have to choose your colors. You have to add another hour or so for that, especially if you're going outside with your own camera and take photos. And then naturally, if this is your own site and you're writing your own blogs, it's going to take much longer to write those blogs, not just lorem ipsum text, right? But look at how little time had we spent on designing this site. And the one thing you have to remember, the site can be for you or you can be making it for friends or clients. And they're going to be very impressed. If they wanted something minimalistic, they're going to be very happy with what you've given them here. And I think this as a starter site, changing it, bringing it into the way we want it to look, this is just real groovy. You just have to bring in more posts and build it out, maybe a weekly post. Don't go for daily. Like I said, I tried weekly. That didn't even work for me. Daily maybe is a little bit too much, way too much for me. As we are here, I see the footer here at the bottom. We have to change that. That's connected to the theme. So we go to customize. And then here in the options sidebar, if I scroll down, you can see I can just click here and that will take me to it. Otherwise, just look for footer here in the left. Click on that. And it says change copyright. That is the one that we had seen. So click on change copyright and you can decide. It's It says copyright, but you can write anything in there that you want to write in there. For example, you say proudly, proud the proud creations of Jenny Lee and publish that. Sounds very melodramatic. And there you go, the proud creations of Jenny Lee. Now, footer, even if you have nothing to put there, I would advise go for a little something. It's a sense that you get at the end of the page that this page has come to an end. So if you want to do that, I highly recommend that you think of this and put a little something extra there at the end for your footer. Let's close out and see how our page looks. You can go to home page. And here's a little trick. If you want to see how this page will look without the WordPress toolbar, every browser has this function. Uh, some call it incognito mode here. It's called a new in private window. If I click on that, it's going to open up a screen that looks like this. And this is totally not connected to your other browser. So let's go here, copy my link and paste it. And now if I say enter, it's going to give me that website but with no WordPress bars or anything, I can view it like any visitor would view it. Great, so if I come here, my home page, my about page, over here, my journal, I've got two entries here. 
my new post over here. Very nice sidebar with a very in-your-face contact form over there. And if you want to contact me, you go over here. If I go to my home page, I can test my links. View posts. Yep. Ah, and this one is set to news. So we have to change this to my journal. Let's not forget that. Remember that one. And if you click up here on the logo, it takes you back to the home page. And once you've done all your testing, you can just click this incognito, or like Microsoft calls it, in private window. At this point, you can sign off, but I'm going to show you something pretty awesome next. I'm going to show you how you can bring in a pop-up and a free pop-up and a magnificent pop-up, and you can attach it to your site. So if you want people to sign up maybe to a newsletter, you send out your journal in a newsletter on a weekly basis, and you want them to sign up for that, you want them to give you their email, a pop-up is a very good idea for that. And we are going to work on an external pop-up and bring it into WordPress. Let me show you how we're going to do it. So leave your WordPress like this and open a new tab. And you go to a website called brizzy.cloud, like so, brizzy.cloud, enter, and it will take you to a free website designer. We are going to use their external pop-up. So here over account login, when I click on that, it's going to take me into my account. But if you want to sign up, it's as simple as going up here and you just sign up. It's super duper, very, very, very easy. Now, once you are in here, this is for free. Everything is for free that you see here. It's a different builder, but I want to show this to you, how you can bring in that external pop-up, add a little flair to your minimalist blog and get people to sign up to your newsletter. So we are going to create that. We click here on create new project and then over here, pop up and alert. This is where we say create. It has created it and it called it pop up number two. And I'm going to call it Jenny's newsletter. You see, we have a few others up here as well. And then I click here on edit pop up. This takes me into the Brizzy page builder, which is completely different to the WordPress page builder. So this is only for your interest. I don't expect you to, to know this, but it's something that I think is fascinating that you can do. So start building your pop-up, you click here, and if you want to use any of these pre-made ones, you will have to go pro, but we're sticking to free stuff. So we say here, add a blank pop-up, and we get this splash screen here. Now, to change the background, we go to this block settings, and the settings are up here. If you click there, you can see the purple there. So that's the colors that we want to change. We want to stick to the same color scheme. Okay, so let's go back here to Jenny and we go and find this color. Click on our color picker and then we copy that color again. Go back here and then here you will see there is the area to paste the code. Control V. Okay, and then we have a shadow here and the shadow is over here. If you go here, shadow, and just drag that shadow down. Zero opacity, so it's gone. Here we have two columns, and I'm going to delete one of these columns. Click here and delete it. And I know maybe a lot of this is going very quickly at this moment, but this is purely for interest sake. I'm going to bring in an image for this background now. Over here, image. And let's say I want to use this one here. Okay, so we have the image and I'm going to drag it. There's my selector. You see again, selector. Many of these are very much the same. I click here on the color and then the overlay, I'm going to reduce it. Okay, good. And now I'm going to bring in a text element. Contact me. So I click here and on the left, you will see this is the same as the blocks. This one is text. I simply click and drag it like this and I drop it here. And it brings in the text element, so I'm going to select the text, triple click. Let's change the color first here to white. And then contact me. Oh, sign up for my newsletter. Sign, sign up for my news, uh, newsletter. I cannot see there. Then I go to T, T for typography. Remember the word typography? And I'm going to increase the size here. Let's make it bigger. And we change it to the same font. We use Playfair Display. Let's see if Playfair Display is here. Ah, there it is. So I select Playfair Display. Nice, that looks like the font that we love and know now. 
and I'm going to align it to the right so it's over here. Then under this, I'm going to bring in a contact form to sign up with. So I click here on the plus and I look here for form and I drag that in here. And you see already there's an email. I don't need this one. So I click on it and I delete it. Paragraph, I click on that and I delete it and I keep this. So for the button, I'm going to use this color again. Let's click here on the button over here, the color, paste that. Nice. And there's also a hover. You see currently if I hover over it, the color changes. So over here is the hover and I'll put the background on white. The text then on this one. So let's see. Hover over that. That's good. And the email, let's click on this. And what I'll do here is I will decrease the then text. Let's make that darker. Great. And what shall I do now? Well, I've got two columns here. So let me bring in a second column again. Add new column over this. Then I'll grab this column here and you'll see I'll drag it to the right. Put it here. Grab the handle here, stretch it out a little bit. Great. Okay, so this is very basic. So what's going to happen is that when people add the email address here and they click on this, let's just type there submit, it will send their email to you. And this way you can subscribe them to your newsletter. Now we have to set a condition for this. Now let me explain to you what is a condition. I'm going to put this thing on Jenny's website. And what I want is that when people are going to exit this page, I want that pop-up to appear. How on earth is my site going to know that people want to exit? Think about it. How do you exit a page? You have to go up here and close it or to the address bar and type it, or you have to go up here. So the moment your cursor moves out of the page, we call that an exit. And that's what we're going to tell this pop-up to do. We go up here to the settings all the way to the left, and then you see here display conditions. We click on that. And then here we select on page exit intent. There we go. On page exit intent. That's it. And we say save. Click out here. And in the bottom right hand corner, click publish. We are done. Can you believe it? We've made this pop up and we are done. But now we have to bring that pop up into WordPress. Click here on go back to dashboard. And we have to get a code. It's called get embed code. So here's Jenny's newsletter. Click on get embed code and we get this big code. And I know every time you see code, you're going to go, ah, I don't want to work with code. I, I didn't sign up for code. Don't worry about this. You're just going to copy and paste it. But the question is, where are you going to paste this code? So let's go back to WordPress, go into the back end, and we have to create a place for that to be pasted. And guess what? You have to do it with a plugin. So go to plugins, click on add new, and this plugin is called insert headers. Let me just type that. Insert headers and footers. And we wait for that one. It's a very simple plugin. Insert headers and footers. Click on install now. You can see also one plus million active installations. Installed, activate, and then we look for it here in the sidebar. Install users, tools, no, uh, settings. Yes, yeah, settings. And under settings, you'll see insert, insert headers and footers. Click on that, and then you have this area for a header, a body, and a footer. So let's go back to Brizzy now, and it says pop up embed, and you copy here. Once you've copied it, Pay attention, you go to WordPress and you go to the footer area, script in footer. Make sure you go to the footer, control V, command V, and you paste that. I promised you only copy paste, nothing else. You don't have to type anything. You don't even have to look at those characters and then click on save. So what has happened? Okay, let's go and test it. Go to the front end here. And here we are on the page, on the page, on the page, on the page. Go to the top and we decide we want to read about her. And we read about her, we read about her. Okay, interesting story by Jenny. We go to my journal, we read one of her, and then we think, okay, this is a nice, nice little thing. Okay, and let me go to the next page and look at my cursor, look at my cursor, and it goes there, and the pop-up appears. 
Holy schmackaroli. How amazing is that? So what I do now is I add my email address here and I click on submit. So I'm going to add an email address here. I'm going to say this is francis.delaney Delaney at smiley.com and click on submit. Now your email was sent successfully. Francis has now signed up to Jenny's email and basically provided her with the email and Jenny will take that email and Jenny will subscribe her into her mailing list of her newsletter. Where on earth is Jenny going to find that email that was just sent here? So for that, you have to go back to this account that you had created in Brizzy, close here. And when you go to Jenny's newsletter where this pop-up is, you see the three little dots here? Click on that and you click on leads. And leads, there you see, the email appears here. How amazing is that? We just created it here. We embedded it here. Then somebody came to your site, they entered the email address, and that email address appears over here. All of this 100% free. This was impossible just two years, a year ago. The amount that you can do with this pop-up when you start playing around with this is just mind-blowing. So this is an extra little add-on feature in this tutorial. You really don't have to do it, but you can consider it that you can add it. And the moment somebody decides, oh, I'm done with this site, here comes the pop-up. Amazing. Absolutely. I want to say skitterend. Skitterend is an Afrikaans word for fantastic, brilliant. And that finally brings us to the end of this tutorial. If we had built this site up from the beginning, we had brought in everything by ourselves, it would be probably double the length of this tutorial. And I want to underscore the fact that don't be fooled by tutorials online that say something like, build a website in under one hour, make a website within 30 minutes. You can set up a framework with things like we've done here with the starter site, but the work is much more. You saw me, I knew exactly where I want to go, where I have to do things. If you are new to it, you may sometimes spend easily up to 10, 20, 30 minutes just searching for one small little thing. So my advice is like always, if you are entirely new to WordPress website making, you do exactly what I do. And that's why all the tools I show you, to you in this tutorial is available for free so you can learn. You go get your WordPress set up and then you bring in Neve theme. You go to the starter themes with a name, Neve, and you import that by one of the ready to use starter sites. After you have imported that starter site from Neve, you go to the pages and you start changing the content like we did. You change the images, you change the text, and you change the color. You go then and you can duplicate the posts or you can bring in your own new posts and write them. And you go into the themes customizer to decide how your index page for your posts, your blog post page will look. Remember though, you have to assign that page within WordPress to make sure WordPress knows which of your pages is your index page for all your posts. And then you have a lot of other features. You can change your profile picture. You can bring that in. You can bring in the duplicate posts that we had done. Forms, we had used Happy Forms to build out one very easy, simple, free form through which people can contact you. And then you can bring in those bells and whistles like we had done here with Brizzy Cloud. We had gone into Brizzy Cloud. We had created a new project and a pop-up. We built up that pop-up. We gave it a condition and we told it that when we put you within WordPress and people come to my site, when they want to leave, you've got a pop-up and let them give us their email address. And then after that, you had gone back in and you installed another plugin to bring in that code, simply copy and paste. And up to now, the only thing you've invested was your time. And I'm pretty sure a little bit of frustration because trust me, there's always frustration. Things never go 100% the way you think they should go. Even when you try to duplicate it the second time, something is just different always the second time. Great. I hope that this was useful and at, at the minimum, even a little bit entertaining. You can hear my voice is about to go. The worst part is, and, and I, I don't even want to share this, this is the second time I've made this because I made it, I made a lot of mistakes in the previous one. I started messing up things 
and I just stood up and decided to redo everything. And that's how it goes. So you record it, you edit it, you upload it and you plan it. And it's just something I enjoy. So I also hope that you had a good time, that you learned something from it. More tutorials like this on the way will focus on different kinds of page builders, will focus on different kinds of add-ons and different kinds of sites, not only blogging, but I think for the time being, we're going to focus a lot on just pure WordPress in the next weeks to come. And that's why a lot of the add-on videos that we currently have on the websites for beginners, tutorials for YouTube, only focus on add-ons as well. If you go and watch that, you will understand how to use them right here within WordPress when you are creating your blogs and your pages. Give us some love here on the channel. Subscribe. Thank you very much. Be safe and see you in the next video.